We are in chapter 5, and there are two sections in chapter 5, 5.1 five and 5.2. In 5.1, we deal with eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and eigenspaces of a square matrix. So we will see what are the definitions, how this works, and how to compute these eigenvalues and eigenvectors and basis for the eigenspace. So that will be the goal for 5.1, just a way to compute eigenvalues and a way to compute eigenvectors and basis for the eigenspaces. So first observation is that A will be a square matrix. You will see why. And every square matrix has eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and eigenspaces associated to it. And only a square matrix has eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and eigenspaces associated to it. So in this section, in this chapter, we are just working with square matrices all the time. Any square matrix has eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and only square matrix has those. So our goal will be to try to find those eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So we already see when matrix is n by n, we will have n eigenvalues. So if matrix is 2 by 2, we have 2 eigenvalues. If matrix is 7 by 7, we have 7 eigenvalues. And for each eigenvalue, we will have an eigenspace associated to it. And our goal will be to find a basis for that eigenspace. Eigenspace is just a linear space associated with the eigenvalue lambda. So these are called lambda. Lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n. So each square matrix, n by n, has n eigenvalues, and each eigenvalue has an eigenspace associated to it. And in that eigenspace live the eigenvectors. So eigenspace is just a linear space. So how does this work? Well, we start with an observation that when we have a square matrix, and if you play with the square matrix and vector, n by 1, you will realize that some vectors, when you multiply them by a matrix, A, what you get as a result is some scalar multiple of the original vector. So that's something special. So those special vectors are called eigenvectors, and those scalars are called eigenvalues. So for instance, here I have a matrix A 2 by 2, 4, 1, 0, 4, so triangular upper. And if I check vector 1, 0, and I multiply A times vector V, the result is, if I check here, is 4, 0 which is actually just four times the original vector v. So the original vector was one, zero. So a times v is actually four times v. Then you say, hey, but that's something special. So I take my vector, multiply it by a matrix, and the result is just a, some scalar multiple of my original vector. So that's special. So we will say that four is the eigenvalue of matrix A, and vector v, vector 1, 0, is the eigenvector associated with that eigenvalue. So the eigenvalue is like a scaling factor in all this relation. So what happens is actually some vectors, when you multiply them by a matrix A, they contract or they extend. Sometimes they flip also if, you, if eigenvalue is negative. What happens is that your vector changes direction. So instead of being 1, 0, it becomes minus 1, 0, something like that. So if the eigenvalue is negative, the O vector just changes direction. And then it is extended or contracted. So it's contracted while the eigenvalue is between minus 1 and 1. And it is extended if your eigenvalue is bigger than 1 or below minus 1. So if you multiply by minus 2, it is two times longer, but just the opposite direction. So those are special things, because 
Let's say I have a vector w, 1, 1, just for fun. So a times 1, 1 gives me 5, 4 as a result. So vector 1, 1 and vector 5, 4, they have nothing in common. There is no number that you can multiply 1, 1 to get 5, 4. So you see, it's not just any vector. Those vectors that are called eigenvectors are special. A times the eigenvector gives you a scalar multiple of your original vector. It's very special. So if you look carefully, actually, any vector of the form A0 is an eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue 4 for a matrix A. So you see that any scalar multiple of vector 1, 0 is actually an eigenvector also. So that's very interesting. So now we realize that the eigenspace is just span of this vector. So that's why we talk about eigenspaces. Any scalar multiple except zero of an eigenvector is also an eigenvector. So that's amazing. So just by the observation that some vectors, when you multiply them by a matrix A, all you did is just extend or shrink the vector, eventually change it its direction. So that's an observation and then we say hey those vectors are special they have special relation with matrix A and this scaling factor lambda. So the scaling factor is called eigenvalue of A and the vectors X are called eigenvectors associated with that eigenvalue. So that's how all this business comes about. We just observed that these things happen. And we have an example here. We will have actually a lot of examples. Our job will be to find all the eigenvalues and eigenvectors that satisfy this equation. So that's our goal. So how do we do it? Because as you see, I have only one equation, ax equal lambda x. A is given, square matrix is given. But lambda, I don't know what are the values. Lambda, and I don't know what are the x's. So I have one equation and two unknowns. Lambda is unknown, x is unknown. So eigenvalue is unknown, and eigenvectors are unknown. Yet I only have one equation. So that's a problem. So let's see what we can do starting with this equation. So this said that some special vectors are just scaled by a matrix. That's a very special relationship. So what does it mean? Well, I realize that x is identity time x, obviously. Right? Identity n by n, because we are dealing with square matrices n by n. And x is n by 1. So x is actually the same thing as identity time x. Well, let's see what happens. If I just send this on the other side, I get this equation here. Ax minus lambda ix equal 0, and 0 is the vector n by 1. Well, I can factor x, and I get this equation. Now, this is a little bit more familiar, because this is a homogeneous equation. Okay, the matrix is a little bit weird. It's not matrix A, it's A minus lambda i. I still don't know what is lambda, and I still don't know what are the x's, but this equation talks a little bit more now than the original one. Here I only knew that x's are some special vectors, then when you multiply them by a matrix, you get a scalar multiple of a vector. But this equation is equivalent, but this talks a little bit more. It tells me that x, all the x's are actually solutions of this homogeneous equation. Oh, but I remember, that means that x belongs to the null space of the matrix A minus lambda i. So x is in the null space of the matrix A minus lambda i. That's okay, that, that's what I read from the equation. Now I would like to have a basis for that null space. Then you say, hey, 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 but x equals 0 solves up your equation. True. It solves always the equation. Here also, if you put x equals 0, it solves always the equation for any matrix actually, and for any lambda. So x equals zero is not something that is very interesting because it's solution to all our problems. But we would like to have more than just 
x equals zero as a solution. So I would like to have, so I know that x belongs to the null space of a minus lambda i, fine. But I don't want that null space to be only the vector zero, because then it's not fun. So I would like to have infinitely many vectors there, actually. So we need to find lambdas such that this matrix, A minus lambda i, has a non-trivial null space. What does it mean? There's infinitely many vectors in the null space. Okay, what does that mean? Well, that means that I would like this homogeneous system with a square matrix. Matrix is A minus lambda i. I would love this homogeneous system with a square matrix to have infinitely many solutions. Okay, because if it has only one solution, then that solution is x is zero, and that's not fun. I would like it to have infinitely many. Okay, so I have a system, homogeneous system, with a square matrix, and I want that system to have infinitely many solutions. That means that my matrix from my equivalent statements, I remember the matrix of the system, A minus lambda i, needs to be non-invertible. It cannot be invertible, because if it is invertible, then I only have one solution, x equals zero. But I'm not interested in that. I would love to have infinitely many solutions. And equivalent statements taught us that the only way for a square matrix, when you have a homogeneous system with a square matrix, the only way for that system to have infinitely many solutions is for the matrix to be non-invertible. What does that mean? Well, that means that the determinant needs to be zero. Ah, okay. So what I'm looking for, actually, are the lambdas that will make the determinant of A minus lambda I is equal to zero. Wow. So we have made huge progress. We started with an observation saying that there are some vectors that are special for a matrix A, and if I multiply A times X, the result will be some scalar multiple of X. And those vectors are called eigenvectors, and the scaling factor lambda is called eigenvalue. Okay, cool. But that was not helpful because all I had is that observation, and this was one equation, and I still didn't know what was X and what was lambda. And then we rewrote it a little bit, and we got this homogeneous system here. And then we said A. So the X's are solutions of this homogeneous system. But we know from our theory that that means that X belongs to the null space of the matrix of the system. And then we said, OK, X equals 0 is always in the null space. That's true. But if the null space is only X equals 0, then it's not fun. Then we said, OK, we would love null space to have infinitely many vectors in there which means that matrix of our system needs to be non-invertible. What does that mean? Well, that means that the determinant of the matrix must be zero. So the determinant of A minus lambda i, which is the matrix of the system, needs to be zero. Okay, so we made huge progress actually. Lambdas need to make this determinant equal to zero. That's amazing. So eigenvalues, lambda, make the determinant of A minus lambda i equal to zero, which means that the matrix A minus lambda i is singular, non-invertible matrix. Okay, that means also that homogeneous system A minus lambda i x equals zero, that system has infinitely many solutions. Good. And the eigenvectors x associated with lambda are all the non-zero solutions, because I'm interested in non-zero solutions of this homogeneous system. Wow. So we made huge progress. To find lambda, I need to make sure that the determinant of this matrix here is zero. And then for each lambda, to find eigenvectors associated with lambda, I need to solve this system. Wow. Amazing. Again, uh, x is always x equals zero is always a solution. We know that it's homogeneous system, so zero is always a solution. 
but it is not an eigenvector. We are not interested in x equals zero as a solution. We want non-zero solutions because those are fun. And then we just realize that for each different eigenvalue, lambda, we have to solve a new different linear system, a minus lambda i, x equal to zero. So for each different lambda, we need to solve a different homogeneous system to get the eigenvectors. So that means if I have a matrix that is five by five, it will have five eigenvalues. For each eigenvalue, I need to solve one homogeneous, eigen, the, uh, one homogeneous system here. So that means I will have five different homogeneous systems to solve. Wow, one system per eigenvalue. That's a lot of work. But now we know what to do. So some observations, eigenspace associated with the eigenvalue lambda is a linear space and it consists of vector zero, obviously every linear space has vector zero, and all the eigenvectors associated with lambda. So eigenvectors are people that are in the eigenspace, but they are non-zero vectors. Again, reminder, zero is not an eigenvector, even though it belongs to every eigenspace. One very important property of eigenvectors is that eigenvectors that are associated with different eigenvalues of the matrix A, they are linearly independent. We will see next time a proof of that. So that's a very in interesting property. You have vectors associated with two different eigenvalues, they are linearly independent immediately. Uh, just a reminder, lambda equals zero as an eigenvalue is just fine. It's okay. So number zero can potentially be an eigenvalue. That's not a problem. But vector zero cannot be an eigenvector. Since we are getting eigenspaces, we know that any non-zero scalar multiple of an eigenvector is also an eigenvector, obviously. So those are just ob observations that are interesting and important. And there is only one easy case to compute eigenvalues. And it is the case of triangular or diagonal matrices. You can have triangular upper or lower or diagonal matrix A. And the eigenvalues of a diagonal matrix or triangular, upper or lower, are just the main entries on the main diagonal. So you check the main diagonal of your matrix when it's diagonal or triangular, upper or lower. So the eigenvalues are the entries of the main diagonal. So that's the only easy case to find eigenvalues. But once you find them, for each different eigenvalue, you need to solve a different homogeneous system. That's a lot of work still. But you got your eigenvalues for free. So at least there's a there's something positive there. So if you have diagonal matrix, eigenvalues are diagonal entries. If you have triangular upper or lower, eigenvalues are diagonal entries. Very simple, but that's the only simple case. And for each one of them, to get eigenvectors associated with them, you need to solve a different homogeneous system. And we will do that a lot. So some terminology, uh, determinant of A minus lambda I, when we compute the determinant, we will figure out that that's actually a polynomial of degree N with the variable lambda. Okay, so that's called characteristic polynomial of a matrix A. So this is a characteristic polynomial of a matrix A. It's the determinant of A minus lambda I. And it's a polynomial of the degree N. Roots of that polynomial are called eigenvalues. So the eigenvalues of the matrix A are the roots of the characteristic polynomial. We already saw this. 
lambdas are making this equation equal to zero. And since this is a polynomial, that means lambdas are the roots of a polynomial of degree n. And we remember that every polynomial of degree n has n roots. They can be real, complex, and repeated. So anything under the sky. Now, in our course, since it's all sunshine, rainbow, and unicorns, we will only deal with real roots and they'll be integers because otherwise it becomes complicated. But in real life, you could have complex numbers, you could have real numbers that are fractions, radicals, anything ugly you can imagine. That would be just fine because those are just roots of a polynomial. You don't have control over that. Now, in our course, our matrices A are chosen in a very uh, delicate way so that actually the eigenvalues are just nice, cute numbers, integers, positive or negative. So that's lucky for us. But in general, it could be any messy number. But for us, it's going to be just nice, cute integers. So characteristic polynomial is this polynomial here, a minus lambda i, and eigenvalues are roots of that polynomial, so they make this equation equal zero. That's how we are going to find eigenvalues, by computing the determinant of this matrix, not of matrix A, of this matrix here. Uh, by the way, this matrix is just matrix A minus lambda i. What does that do is, on the diagonal of A, you subtract the number minus lambda, actually. So it's just matrix A, and the diagonal is changed. Diagonal is the number that was already there minus lambda. So it's not a big change. It's just the diagonal entries. We subtract lambda from them. So that's the matrix we get here. Uh, two concepts that will be useful later on. They're not so useful now, but it's better to introduce them so you know what we are talking about. We saw that eigenvalues are roots of a polynomial. Okay, good. So we have notion of algebraic multiplicity of an eigenvalue and geometric multiplicity of an eigenvalue. So here's the definition. Algebraic multiplicity of an eigenvalue is just the number of times lambda is a root of the characteristic polynomial. So when you compute the roots of your characteristic polynomial, if lambda, let's say 4, appears 1, then eigenvalue 4, its algebraic multiplicity, will be 1. But let's say, for some reason, eigenvalue minus 2 appears 4 times as a root of your characteristic polynomial. Then you will say, ah, eigenvalue minus 2, its algebraic multiplicity is 4, because it's 4 times appearing as a root of our characteristic polynomial. So that's going to be clear as soon as you find the roots of the characteristic polynomial. You will know what is the algebraic multiplicity of your eigenvalue. How many times that eigenvalue is a root of the characteristic polynomial. In the case of algebraic, uh, in the case of geometric multiplicity of the eigenvalue, well, that's the dimension of the eigenspace that is associated with eigenvalue lambda. So, to know this, pretty much you need to compute the eigenvectors and see what is the basis for the eigenspace. And then you will know what is geometric. So, you see geometrics, multiplicity is linked to the dimension of the eigenspace. So, there are vectors involved there. So, geometric vectors, algebraic, algebra roots. Okay, so that's the association you can make. Now, a very important thing to remember, geometric multiplicity is always smaller or equal to algebraic multiplicity. Which means dimension of the eigenspace is always smaller, smaller or equal to the number of times eigenvalue is 
a root of the characteristic polynomial. Obviously, the minimum value for algebraic and geometric multiplicity is 1, because lambda is a root at least once. So, algebraic multiplicity is at least 1. And since geometric is smaller or equal to 1, it must be 1. Because you will have at least one eigenvector, right? Associated. So that eigenvector will generate the eigenspace. So the dimension of that eigenspace will be 1. So we will see all that in detail anyways. So these are just the definitions. It will be useful later on. Other useful properties, I thought of gathering them all on one slide so you have them in one place. The most important one is the first one, saying that the determinant of your square matrix is the product of all eigenvalues of the matrix. So all of them, all n of them. So if you have repeated eigenvalues, you put them, if one eigenvalue is repeated three times, you put it three times there. You just repeat it three times. So all of the eigenvalues, you multiply them, you get determinant of A. We already know that A is invertible if and only if determinant is different from zero. So now since we know that the determinant is equal to the product of eigenvalues, that means that A is invertible if and only if zero is not an eigenvalue of A. Because if zero is eigenvalue, the product will be zero, right? So A is invertible if and only if number zero is not an eigenvalue of the matrix. The same thing means that A is not invertible if and only if zero is an eigenvalue of a matrix. And we know that to find eigenvalues, we need to compute the determinant of some matrix. And we remember that the determinant of a matrix and its transpose is the same thing. So that means that the, for matrix A and A transpose, they'll have the same characteristic polynomial. Because when we compute characteristic polynomial, it's A minus lambda I. So we just subtract on the diagonal lambda. Diagonal entries minus lambda. Everything else in the matrix stays the same. So if you do the transpose, the diagonal didn't change, right? So we know that determinant of A and determinant of A transpose is the same thing. So determinant of A minus lambda I and determinant of A transpose minus lambda I is the same thing. So it's same characteristic polynomial. It's had, it has the same roots, so same eigenvalues, same algebraic multiplicity, same geometric multiplicity. However, the eigenspaces associated are different, and we will see, actually you will see several examples of that. So A and A transpose have the same eigenvalues, same algebraic and geometric multiplicity, but the eigenspaces associated to those eigenvalues are different. So another interesting property is when A is invertible. So we know that in here we are dealing with square matrices, so some of them are invertible, some of them are not. All of the square matrices have eigenvalues and eigenvectors, that's fine. But if my matrix A and by N is invertible, and its eigenvalues are lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n, then the eigenvalues of A inverse are just 1 over the eigenvalues of matrix A. So eigenvalues of the inverse are 1 over lambda 1, 1 over lambda 2, 1 over lambda 3, 1 over lambda n. So it's straightforward. And we already know that the determinant of A inverse is 1 over the determinant of A. We know that from previous results. The good news also is that the eigenspaces associated remain the same. So eigenspace associated with lambda 1 from associated with matrix A is the same as the eigenspace associated with 1 over lambda 1 for A inverse. It's amazing. We will see proofs of that later on. So these are the properties that are interesting and important to remember. The most important, again, is that the determinant of a matrix is product of all of the eigenvalues.
here I want just to emphasize that we have a lot of eigenvalues. So for a matrix n by n, we have n of them. And we have a lot of eigenvectors. Okay, eigenvectors live in eigenspaces. So each eigenvalue has an eigenspace associated to it. So you have a matrix n by n. That matrix has n eigenvalues. Each eigenvalue has an eigenspace associated to it. In that eigenspace live the eigenvectors. And we remember 0 is not an eigenvector, even though it is in the eigenspace. But this is just a reminder of the definition with which we started. A scalar lambda is an eigenvalue of a matrix A. And a non-zero vector x is an eigenvector of A. And that eigenvector is associated with the eigenvalue lambda, if and only if this equation is satisfied. And again, it's super important to remember that zero is not an eigenvector, even though it belongs to all eigenspaces. And remember that lambda equals zero is just fine as an eigenvalue. By now we know that all square matrices that are not invertible, they have zero as an eigenvalue. So you can have the same number that is eigenvalue for many, many, many matrices. That's just fine. So before we start computing, let's just remind ourselves what we need to do. So we are given a square matrix, n by n, and our goal is to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors associated. So eigenvalues, lambda, are roots of characteristic polynomial. So characteristic polynomial is the determinant of a minus lambda i. So we need to make this equal zero. So lambdas will be roots of this polynomial. And we will have n of them. Some of them repeated, it's fine. And for each eigenvalue, lambda, we have to solve a different homogeneous system. Solutions will be non-zero solutions, are eigenvectors that are associated with the eigenvalue lambda. We know that zero is a solution always, but we are not interested in zero, we are interested in non-zero solutions. So again, vector zero is always a solution, but it's never an eigenvector. Eigenvectors are non-zero vectors that solve this equation. And we made sure that we have infinitely many solutions for this equation because the determinant of the matrix of the system is zero. So all this is linked with the equivalent statements that we need to revise. Okay, so now it's time to solve some problems and see how all this works. So here we are, we need to try to solve some problems. And here is a matrix A, two by two, we start with small ones, and then we will complete, make things more complicated. So I'm given a, a square matrix, and my goal is to find eigenvalues of the matrix and associated eigenvectors and eventually a basis for the eigenspaces. So we said, first thing, since I'm giving the matrix, I need to find the characteristic polynomial of a matrix. What is the characteristic polynomial? It is the determinant of A minus lambda I. I is here identity two by two. So that's the determinant of this matrix here. So this is just subtracting lambda from the diagonal entries. So diagonal entries are 4 and minus 4. So we subtract lambda from 4 and minus 4. And we need to compute the determinant of this matrix. Well, it's 2 by 2. So it's this times this minus 1 times 0, which is 0. Also, you can realize that this is a triangular upper matrix. So the determinant is just product of diagonal terms. Up to you. So I have this. So this needs to be equal to zero, right? That's what I want. So I want roots of this polynomial. So what are the roots? What makes this zero? Well, four and four. So roots are four and four. So I have one eigenvalue, which is four, but repeated twice because it's double root. Okay, so I can say that algebraic multiplicity 
of eigenvalue 4 is 2. It's repeated twice, 4 and 4. Geometric multiplicity? Well, it's maybe 1, maybe 2, I don't know. I need to compute. For now, we will see. I don't know yet. For algebraic, it's easy. It's just how many times it is root of a polynomial. It is once, twice, two times root. So, algebraic multiplicity is 2 for my eigenvalue 4. But geometric is either 1 or 2. I don't know. I will see. I need to compute. So, I have my eigenvalue. Fine. Oh, by the way, the determinant is the product of all eigenvalues. So, my eigenvalue is 4 and 4. So, it's 4 times 4, 16. Well, obviously, if you check your matrix A, the determinant is product of diagonal entries because you have upper, diagonal, uh, upper triangular matrix. So, 4 times 4, 16, obviously. Well, that's the result we had. The determinant is product of all eigenvalues with all their multiplicities. So, 4 times 4, 16. Okay, fine. So, let's see now how do I find eigenvectors associated to eigenvalue 4. So, I need to solve a minus 4i x equal 0. 0 is vector 2 by 1. Okay, so a was 4, 1, 0, 4. So, 4 minus 4, 1, 0, 4 minus 4, and then x is x1, x2, equal to vector 0, 0. So this means 4 minus 4, 0, 1, 0, 0. I need to solve this homogeneous system. Well, if you check the last row has zeros, beautiful. On the other side, zero is a homogeneous system, it's fine. So the first row tells me it's zero times x1 plus one times x2 equals zero. So that means that x2 is zero. And you see x1 is free variable. Okay, so I have x1 is a free variable, x2 is zero. So my general solution is x1, zero. And if I factor it, it's x1 factor of 1, 0. Okay, so I got only one guy here. By the way, if you observe, you will notice that you have here row of zeros, column of zeros. So you have one free variable, one main variable. So here it is, your free variable x1, main variable was x2, it was equal to 0. So all these things that we have already seen. So the solution of this homogeneous system is given like this. So this will be my eigenvector. So I call it representative eigenvector. And you will see why, because any scalar multiple of this guy except 0 is also an eigenvector. So a representative eigenvector associated with an eigenvalue 4 is 1, 0. Obviously, 7, 0 is fine also. Minus 11, 0 is fine. It's just one of the guys that generates the eigenspace. So a basis for the eigenspace, eigenspace associated with eigenvalue 4, will be this vector here. The he is the basis for the eigenspace. So eigenspace of eigenvalue 4 is just span of the eigenvector 1, 0. Okay, so eigenspace is just span of the eigenvector. Obviously, here live any scalar multiple of 1, 0, and all of them except vector 0, 0, all of other vectors, non zero vectors, are the eigenvectors. And obviously, you see the dimension of this eigenspace is 1. Ah, dimension of eigenspace is 1, that means the geometric multiplicity of eigenvalue 4 is 1. So we remember algebraic multiplicity of eigenvalue is number of times the eigenvalue is a root of the characteristic polynomial. In our case, 4 was root twice. So its algebraic multiplicity was 2. And the definition of geometric multiplicity is the dimension of the eigenspace associated with the eigenvalue 4. So here eigenspace is generated just by one guy. So the basis is just one zero, so one guy, dimension is one, so geometric multiplicity of eigenvalue will be one. So in summary, what we have, we have our matrix, we found eigenvalue, and that eigenvalue had algebraic multiplicity two, it was root twice. 
so it was four and four. And geometric multiplicity was one because the dimension of the eigenspace associated with four, lambda equal four, the dimension was one, we found it. And this is one representative eigenvector. Uh, minus one zero would be another one, it's fine. Any scalar multiple of one zero except zero zero. Any other non-zero vector that has this shape would be an eigenvector also. All right, so now an observation. So we found for this matrix, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. What we need to realize is we have another matrix for two, the other one was four, one, zero, four. This is four, two, zero, four. So this is a different matrix. You go through the same process. You'll have eigenvalue four. We know that by now we have triangular upper, so eigenvalues are just diagonal entries, so it's four and four, so algebraic multiplicity is two, and we'll find out the geometric multiplicity is also as previously one. And the representative eigenvector will be one zero. So they will have matrix A and matrix B are different matrices, yet they have the same eigenvalue with the same algebraic multiplicity and same geometric multiplicity and same eigenspaces. Actually, if I check any matrix of the form for A, but A different from 0, 0, 4, it's triangular upper, it will have 4 as eigenvalue twice, and it will have representative eigenvector 1, 0. So we just realized that we can have many, many, many matrices that have the exact same eigenvalues and the exact same eigenspaces. And that's just fine. Not a big deal. Okay? All we need to do is just go through the process and not think too much about these details. So you can have different matrices that have the same eigenvalues and same eigenspaces. It's just fine. Another example. So again, we need to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors and basis of the eigenspaces for our matrix. Here is the matrix. Two by two again. Three, four, eight, minus one. So first thing is find the characteristic polynomial. And the characteristic polynomial is given by a minus lambda i. i is here two by two. So we need to find the determinant of three minus lambda. 4, 8, minus 1, minus lambda. Okay. So it's 2 by 2, so the determinant is this times this minus this times this. It's 3 minus lambda, minus 1, minus lambda. Minus 4 times 8, 32. Okay, so now we break this. So we have minus 3, then minus 3 lambda, plus lambda, plus lambda squared, minus 32. So we have lambda squared. Minus 3 lambda plus lambda is minus 2 lambda. Then we have negative 32 minus 3 is negative 35. So this is our characteristic polynomial. Now we need to find the roots of this characteristic polynomial. Eigenvalues are the roots. So I can factor this or find the roots the other way, as you like. So I guess the factors are 7 and plus or minus 5, we will see. So I have lambda minus 7 and lambda probably plus 5. So if I do so lambda square. 5 lambda minus 7, that's minus 2, minus 35. Okay, so I have factored my characteristic polynomial. So eigenvalues are the roots of this polynomial. So the eigenvalues are obviously so roots of lambda minus 
7 and lambda plus 5. So what are the roots? They are 7 and negative 5. So lambda 1 is 7 and lambda 2 is negative 5. So these are the two eigenvalues of the matrix A. So I remember the determinant of A was the product of eigenvalues, so it's lambda 1 times lambda 2, which means it's 7 times negative 5, so minus 35. Okay, obviously you can compute it over there, it's fine also, because it's easy, 2 by 2, but I just want to remind you that the determinant is always a product of eigenvalues, all of the eigenvalues. Okay, so I have the eigenvalues 7 and negative 5, I need to find the eigenvectors now. So let's do that part of the work. So for the eigenvalue 7, find the eigenvectors. Okay, so I need my matrix A. So eigenvectors are solutions of A minus 7i x equal 0, right? So a was 3, 4, 8, minus 1. I subtract 7 from the diagonal entries, and the rest of the matrix remains unchanged. Minus 7. x1, x2 equal 0, 0. Here I have minus 4, 4, 8, minus 8. Obviously this matrix is not invertible, its determinant is 0. That's how we computed the eigenvalues. Eigenvalues make the determinant of this matrix 0, obviously, because the second row is minus 2 times the first. So what I know is that I will have one free variable. So Algebraic multiplicity of the eigenvalue 7 was 1, and its geometric will be 1 also. So I'll, I know I'll already have one free variable. Also, I know that the, the dimension of the null space of this matrix is 1. The rank will be 1 because this is 2 by 2 matrix. So that means that I have one row that is useless and the other one is useful. So knowing all those Equivalent statements and the theory helps here because I need to solve the system. I'll just use one equation on both because the other one is linearly dependent. So if I use the first one, I get something like this. So this means that x1 is equal to x2. I don't need the other equation. The other equation is just minus 2 times the first. So not useful. So I have this. So a general solution. is x1, x2, so it is x1, x1, or x2, x2 as you like, they are both the same, so I can factor x1, I get vector 1, 1. So the eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue 7 will be eigenvector 1, 1. This is just one representative eigenvector. Minus 7, minus 7 is another one. 2, 2 is another one. So that's fine. I have the eigenspace. The entire space. All the scalar multiples of 1, 1, except for 0. So I give it the name. Give one for fun. Okay. So... So the eigenspace associated with 7 is span of 1, 1, a basis of this eigenspace is a vector.
vector 1, 1. It's a set containing the vector. That's the basis. So dimension of this eigenspace is obviously 1. So I know that lambda 1 equals 7 algebraic multiplicity is 1. And this geometric multiplicity is also 1. Because I mentioned of the eigenspaces associated to it is 1. OK, good. So we found a basis for the eigenspace associated with eigenvalue 7. So let's do the same work for eigenvalue negative 5. So first thing I need to do is to solve the homogeneous system, which is A minus, OK, I will write it minus 5i x equal 0. So this is A plus, okay, let's write it A plus 5i x equal 0. So it was 3 plus 5 on diagonal, you have 4, 8, and think this is minus 1 plus 5. x1, x2. So it's a lot of solving of homogeneous systems. So here I have two eigenvalues, so I'll need to solve two different homogeneous systems. So this one is 8, 8, and this is 4, 4. Obviously, we know that the determinant of this matrix is 0. There is one row that is useless. The other one is useful, especially when they are both equal. So I need to solve this equals 0. So I have 2 x1 equal to negative x2. Okay. Or if you wish, negative 2 x1 is equal to x2. So one of them is free, you choose the one you like, I don't care, it's fine. So a general solution. So x1, x2 equal 2. So here I'll keep x1 as 3, and x2 is negative 2x1, factor x1. So I have 1, negative 2. Ta-da! I found also an eigenvector now. So V2 equals 1, negative 2. He is a representative. So it's one of infinitely many of them. So it's one vector that is representative eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue of negative five. So the eigenspace is span of this vector. 1, negative 2. So dimension of this eigenspace is 1, obviously. Here I'm writing the eigenvalue associated with it, just for, for us to know. So that's what we have. We have an eigenvalue minus 5, and the eigenspace is here. The basis for this eigenspace, one of the bases, so it is vector 1, negative 2, 
It could be also negative 1, 2. It could be 10, negative 20. Doesn't matter any scalar multiple except for 0 could do the work. So that's how we find eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And obviously, if you check the eigenvectors, they are linearly independent. So we had 1 and negative 2 and 1, 1. They are linearly independent. So that's another result we already have established. We know that eigenvectors associated with different eigenvalues, they are linearly independent. That's beautiful. Well, we could push this either even further, saying that now we have two linearly independent vectors. They form a basis for R2 also. That's beautiful. We just expand things. Here we have another example. Now matrix is 3 by 3. So I expect three eigenvalues. So again, I need to find eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and eigenspaces associated. So first step is always to find the characteristic polynomial. But the goal of finding characteristic polynomial is to find the roots of the characteristic polynomial. Because eigenvalues are the roots of the characteristic polynomial. But we already know that for triangular, lower or upper, or diagonal matrices, eigenvalues are the values that are on the main diagonal. So we could be smart at some point and use our knowledge. But if we are not smart and if we don't learn, well, we will do this and then compute the determinant. Again, this is a lower triangular matrix, so the determinant is just the product of diagonal entries. This. Which is fine. Some useless work, but it's okay. So I need to find the roots. Obviously, the roots are so the, also the eigenvalues. So one, obviously. And the other one is two, but multiplicity is two. So algebraic. For this guy, algebraic multiplicity is 1. So for this guy, algebraic multiplicity one is 1, and also geometric will be 1. No other choice, because geometric is always smaller, smaller or equal to algebraic, and it starts with 1, everybody. So it's, for this guy, it's either 1 or 2. I don't know. We will see. What is the algebraic multiplicity for? For this guy, algebraic is 1, geometric is 1. For this guy, algebraic is 2. Geometric, maybe 1, maybe 2, we will see. So these are the eigenvalues. Again, we can be smart and learn some theory that says when you have triangular, upper or lower, or diagonal matrix, eigenvalues are the diagonal entries. So all you need to say is A is triangular, Lower, therefore, eigenvalues are 1, 2, 2. Bam, finished. Instead of writing all this. But if you don't learn much, well, you waste your time writing stuff. It's up to you what you learn. So let's compute eigenvectors. So for lambda 1 equal 1. So what do I need to do is solve. 1, minus 1, 0, 0, or if I read just general, A minus, so 1, huh? so 1 times I. So this is what I need to solve. X is 3 by 1 also, obviously. So I need to solve 1 minus 1, 0, 0, then 1, 2, then 2 minus 1, and this is 2 minus 1, x1, x2, x3, equal to 0, 0, 0. Homogeneous system. This matrix is obviously not invertible. And you see you have a row of zeros, obviously the determinant is 0. If your determinant is not 0, you have a problem, you made a mistake somewhere. 
and you need to stop and go and correct your mistake. This matrix is always not invertible, otherwise you have a problem. We found eigenvalues to make this matrix not invertible. So you see the first row is zero, obviously the determinant is zero. Oh, by the way, what's the determinant of matrix A? Just for fun. The determinant of A is the product of all the eigenvalues. So it's 1 times 2 times 2. Because 2 is repeated twice. 1 times 2 times 2. Matrix 3 by 3 has three eigenvalues. 1, 2, and 2. Okay, so this is 4. Well, you don't believe me, multiply. You have diagonal matrix. Uh, triangular matrix. Okay, I need to solve this. Good luck. So first one is gone, so the other two are important. So what do we do? We can kill this guy here for fun. So row 3 becomes row 3 minus 2 times row 1. We have 0, 0, 0, and 1, 1, 0, and then 0, right? And it's 2 times, so this is 3 now. 1, x1, x2, x3 equal to 0, 0, 0. Actually, you can start the fight here as you like. You just need to solve. That's all. How you solve using Gauss, Jordan or not, I don't care. Just fight with it if you wish. This equation here tells me that x1 plus x2 is 0, which means that x1 is equal to negative x2. Okay. This equation tells me 3x2 plus x3 is equal to 0, which means that x3 is equal to negative 3x2. So now I decided that x2 will be free variable, because the other guys are expressed in terms of x2. It doesn't matter. So. A general solution is so I have x1, x2, x3 equal to so x1 is negative x2, x2 is x2, and x3 is negative 3x2. So I can factor x2 obviously, and I get negative 1, 1, negative 3. So this will be my eigenvector. So v1 will be negative 1, 1, and negative 3. So that's interesting as an observation. You can choose the eigenvalue you like, uh, the, the free variable you like. It's up to you. So negative 1, 1, negative 3. So let me write it properly. Correct. Yep. Is a representative eigenvector associated with eigenvalue one. Okay. So this is also a basis. Eigenspace negative one one negative three. Keep things simple. That's all. So the eigenspace associated with the eigenvalue one is just span of the vector. Fine. So the dimension of this space is obviously one. We knew that from the day one. So. The geometric multiplicity of the eigenvalue one is one also. So that's fine. All that is known, now it's fine. We have our eigen vector associated with the eigenvalue. All good, all nice. So now we need to go and 
find the eigenvector or eigenvectors associated with the other eigenvalue. So let's clean the board. I need some space. So what was the other eigenvalue? For lambda 2 equal to 2. So I need to solve a minus 2 times i x equal this. So I need to solve. So we have 1 minus 2, 0, 0, and then 1, 2, 2 minus 2. Then it gets 5, and 2 minus 2, and then I have x1, x2, x3, equal to 0, 0, 0. Okay, let's fight. So this guy, minus 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, 0, 5, 0, 0, oh, oh. See? Column of zeros, that's good news. Well, it's good because the first equation tells me that x1 is 0. So negative x1 is 0, so that means x1 is 0. Well, the second equation tells me the same thing. So that means I can run here immediately. I know that x1 is 0. So I have 2 times 0 plus 5 times x2 equal to 0. That means that x2 is also 0. And x3 is free variable. Uh, how about that? So my solution, the general solution, x1, x2, x3. This is important to write. So x1, 0. x2, 0. x3 is x3, 3. Factor x3, 0, 0, 1. So, ta-da, I have my eigenvector. So, V2 will be 0, 0, 1. So, this guy will be a basis for the eigenspace. Yes. Okay, so that was a representative eigenvector, so it's one among the gazillion that is associated, so a basis of the eigenspace is the vector 0, 0, 1, and the eigenspace itself is just span of the vector 0, 0, 1. So dimension is 1. Oh, dimension is 1. So dimension is 1. What does it mean? It means that geometric the geometric multiplicity of the eigenvalue 2 is 1. So eigenvalue 2 was repeated twice as a root, so its algebraic multiplicity was 2, but its geometric turns out to be 1. Aha! Uh -huh. So we knew the candidates were 1 or 2, we didn't know which one. Well, that's, it turns out that it is 1. The eigenspace is generated only by one vector, one vector which is 0, 0, 1. So obviously if we check the vectors, 0, 0, 1, and the vector that we got negative 1, 1, negative 3, they are linearly independent, obviously. They are not scalar multiple of each other. So that's how we do it. So you can have 3 by 3 matrix. Like this one has an eigenvalue 
of multiplicity one, so algebraic and geometric, so we found one eigenvector, and has eigenvalue two of geometric multiplicity two, but we just figured out that it's geometric multiplicity was one, so there's only one uh, dimensional eigenspace associated with lambda two, so that's fine. Nothing bad here. Here we have another one. matrix three by three. Again, lower triangular. So this time I'm a little bit smarter. I just realized it is a lower triangular matrix. So I know by a result, I just need to say it, that the eigenvalues of a lower triangular or upper triangular or diagonal are just diagonal entries. So it's two, negative four, and five. Those are the three eigenvalues. No need to write the characteristic polynomial for nothing. Don't suffer for nothing. This case is simple because it's triangular lower. And since algebraic multiplicity is one, geometric will be one also. So I know that immediately. So that's fine. All the knowledge is there. So what is the determinant of this matrix? Well, it's product of all the eigenvalues. Down. So it is minus 18, right? 20, 40, minus 40. Okay. Well, we could have it here also. It's the same. But I just want to stress that the determinant is product of all the eigenvalues. Okay, let's find the eigenvectors associated with these eigenvalues and also find the basis for the eigenspace. So, ba basis. Of each eigenspace will have only one guy in there because they are one dimensional eigenspaces. So for lambda 1, I need to solve a minus lambda 1i x equal to 0, 3 by 1. So solve so 2 minus 2, 0, 0, and then negative 1, 0. Negative 4 minus 2, 0 here, 2, 5 minus 2, x1, x2, x3, equal to vector 0, 0, 0. So again, the determinant of this matrix will be 0. So what I have is 0, 0, 0. So I have row of 0, so obviously the determinant will be 0. So this is minus 6, 2, and this is 3. So you could use gauss jordan if you wish, or just fight your way through it, it's fine. Whichever one you like, it's up to you. You can use a mix of those, it's up to you. I'm just going to fight through this, because this tells me, the second equation tells me this, which means that x1 is equal to negative 6 x2. Okay, so that's what I get from this. The last equation tells me 2x2 plus 3x3 is 0. This means that x, here I have x2, so I'll make x2 free variable for fun. So I have 3x3 equal to negative 2x2, which means that x3 is equal to negative 2 over 3, x2, and I'll make x2 free variable, doesn't really matter. So general solution, the vector x1, x2, x3, boom, boom, boom. So x1, we said x1, where is x1, is negative 6x2, x2, x2 is x2 because it's 3, and x3 is negative 2 over 3 x2. So I can factor x2 out, and I get negative 6, 1, and negative 2 over 3. Oops, let me move this. So the eigenvector will be this guy. So now if you don't like, so I'll just write it to be 1, will be negative 6, 1, and negative 2 over 3. If you don't like a negative, 
numbers, you can multiply by minus 1. If you don't like fractions, you can multiply by 3. It's up to you, it doesn't matter, or you can just keep the guy as it is. So, we can just keep it and say, a vector negative 6, 1, and negative 2 over 3 is a representative eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue, what was the eigenvalue? The eigenspace is just generated by him, so he's a basis. Eigenspace. Uh, is. So I just write the eigenvalue there just for us to know what it is. Negative 6, 1, negative 2 over 3. Or any scalar multiple different from zero, obviously. Doesn't matter. So what we need is there, we have our eigenvector, we have eigenspace, the dimension of the eigenspace, just span of the guy. You can give it a name like V1 and just keep V1 instead of copying all this. Dimension of this linear space is one as expected. We knew that from the beginning. Okay, so we found one eigenvector. That's gorgeous. Now we need to find the other one. Let's go back to the work. So let me maybe clean this and then start all over again. For eigenvalue, what was the second one? Uh, minus 4. So A minus minus 4 identity A is 0 by 1, right? So I'll write the system. It's 2 minus minus 4, like it's plus 4. Negative 4 plus 4, 2, and 5 plus 4, right? So x1, x2, x3 equal 0, 0, 0. Okay, go. Obviously, we know that the determinant of this matrix is 0, because we have 0 here. It needs to be, otherwise, we are in trouble. Again, you can solve this using gauss jordan or just fight with your way through it. Because the first equation tells you that 6x1 is 0, so x1 is 0. Bye. No need to suffer. This equation also tells you the same thing, so that's fine. The last equation tells you that 2x2 plus 9x3 is equal to 0. So what do we do? Well, we say, let's say x2 is equal to negative 9 over 2, x3, and then make x3 free variable. It doesn't matter, you could do the other way around and make x2 free variable. Up to you. So, a general solution. x1, x2, x3 equal to so x1 it was 0 x2 negative 9 over 2 and x3 is x3 and this was x3 by factor x3 so I get 
0, negative 9 over 2, 1. So V2 will be, for my representative eigenvector, will be this. If you don't like fractions, you can multiply by 2. I can call it W2 for fun. And it's going to be this times 2. Okay, so now I don't have a fraction. Wow, whatever. So it's up to you what you do. So a basis of the eigenspace associated with the eigenvalue of negative 4 is, well, I'll keep the guy without fraction, or any scalar multiple of this number, this vector except 0, right? Vector 0 is never an eigenvector. So, 0, 9 is a representative eigenvector, and it is associated with the eigenvalue negative 4. So, that's all good. We still have one eigenvalue to go. Eigenvalue 3. What was the last eigenvalue? It was 5. So solve minus 5i is 0. So let's see. So I had 2. Minus 5, 0, 1, 0. And I have minus 4, minus 5. And I have 5, minus 5. X1, X2, X3 equal to 0, 0, 0. Boom. Let's see what we get. So I have. Negative 3, 0, 0. This is negative 9. And this is 2, 0, x1, x2, x3 equal to 0, 0, 0. Okay. So, first equation tells me that x1 is 0, right? So, x1 is 0. And I'm going to use it now. The last equation tells me that x2 is 0. And x3 is obviously free variable. So I'm going to use those things quickly. The goal is to solve it, huh? not to spend our life on it. So that's what I have. And x3 free variable. You see it here, huh? you have column of zeros. So x3 is free. So a general solution. So it is x1, x2, x3. So x1, 0, x2, 0, and x3 is x3, free variable. So I can factor x3. So I get vector 0, 0, 1. So this is my eigenvector, representative eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue 5. So, V3 equal to, so now I'm going to call it V3 for fun, is a representative eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue 5. This is a basis for the eigenspace, and the eigenspace dimension of the eigenspace is one. So the eigenspace associated with this is just span of phi three, right, of zero zero one. So dimension of this eigenspace is obviously one. 
we knew that from the beginning. A basis for the eigenspace is the vector 0, 0, 1. Okay, so that's it. We finished all the work. As you see, once we find the eigenvalues, then computing the eigenvectors, it's always the same process. It's a little bit long, but it's not that complicated. It's just tiresome. But the process is simple. You solve homogeneous system, and that's it. We have another example, 3 by 3 again, so I'll have three eigenvalues. I don't know what multiplicity we will see. Well, matrix is full of ones. Okay, so that tells me already that I have two linearly dependent rows. So it means the rank of this matrix is one, dimension of the null space is two, so I know all that. And I already know that the determinant of this matrix will be 0. So 0 will be one of the eigenvalues. More than that, I can guess that this is multiplicity 2 also. We will see. So, But what I want to show you here, obviously, you can expand to compute the determinant the way you like, by the row or the column you like. It's all the same. <laughs> so I need my characteristic polynomial of matrix A, which is determinant of a minus lambda i, so this is it. What I want to show you is, okay, you can compute determinant, expand by row or comments, you like, it's fine. But you could try to simplify your life, if possible, by applying some elementary row operations that could maybe introduce a zero somewhere to simplify your life. Let's just see how that goes. So I'll apply, I'll kill, I'll use this root to kill this guy. Okay? So I'll row, use, replace row 3 by row 3 minus row 2. I'll do that. So I'll kill this guy. And while I'm here, I could use this guy to kill this guy. So I'll go row 1, replace by row 1 minus row 2 also. Oops, this is row 2. Okay, fine. And we know that these elementary row operations do not change the determinant. Okay, fine, good. So no need to suffer with that. I know that already. So they don't change the determinant. So this minus this is zero. So the second row stays the same, right? So let's copy it. The third row, this minus this is zero. This minus this is lambda. This minus this is negative lambda. Okay, that's nice. And then row one minus row two. So this minus this is negative lambda. This minus this is lambda. This minus this is zero. So it's a little bit cuter. There's nothing wrong with computing the determinant state from here and go off. Compute, compute, it's fine. But this one looks like cuter. So I can expand by column one or row one, or column three, or row three. It's fine. Whatever I do, it's fine. So let me expand by column one for fun. And we know we need to write this, otherwise points are gone. So here I have negative lambda times determinant. So you remember when you compute determinant the most important word is determinant. So kill this, kill this. I have 1 minus lambda, 1 and lambda minus lambda. Okay, cool minus 1 times determinant, so it's minus 1 times determinant that I get when I kill this and this, so it's lambda 0, okay. and lambda minus lambda, 
obviously if you make a mistake, things go bad. So I have minus lambda. The determinant here is negative lambda times minus lambda, minus lambda, beautiful, minus, the determinant here is negative lambda square. Okay, that's cute. Equal, so things here, minus lambda, minus lambda is minus 2 lambda, and then I have lambda square, good, and then I have plus lambda square from this guy, and then this is negative lambda 3, and then plus 2 lambda 2, plus lambda square is equal to minus lambda 3, plus 3 lambda 2. Wow! So carefully is so it is negative lambda cube plus 3 lambda square. So I can factor this, put lambda square out. So I have 3 minus lambda as characteristic polynomial. Oof. So lambda square. 3 minus lambda. Ah, that's cool. So the roots are 0 and so 0, 0 and 3. Obviously, eigenvalues of A are the roots. So the first eigenvalue is 0 algebraic multiplicity 2 and the other one is 3 and algebraic and geometric multiplicity is 1. For this guy I don't know what is geometric, I need to compute. So I have two eigenvalues, 0 of multiplicity 2 and eigenvalue 3 multiplicity 1 geometric and algebraic. Okay, so let's compute for 0. Because that's the easy one. So find the eigenvectors. So I need to solve a minus lambda 1 i x equal to 0. So since lambda 1 is 0, so this means is a x equals 0. So this means I need to solve 1, 1, 1 x1, x2, x3, 0, 0, 0. While applying Gauss Jordan, it's going to be easy. Row 2 minus row 1, and row 3 minus row 1. So you get 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. x1, x2, x3. Boom. So this means I have x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals 0. So obviously I'll have two free variables. Well, that's good because this is a new station form, right? x1 is main variable and x2, x3 are free. So x1 is equal to negative x2, negative x3. <coughs> x2, free variable and x3, free variable. That's okay because we remember that algebraic multiplicity of 0 was 2. So I had either 1 or 2 free variables. So the eigenspace was <coughs> of dimension 1 or 2. In this case, it's going to be of dimension 1. Oh, of dimension 2, sorry. So a general solution. is x1, x2, x3. So x1 is negative x2, negative x3. x2 is 3, x3 is 3. So I factor x2 
and I factor x3, three variables. So I have minus one, minus one, one, zero, and zero, one. So the eigenvectors associated with eigenvalue zero are these two. <coughs> They are linearly independent, obviously, these two vectors. So let's say call this guy V1 and this guy V2. Okay. And they are linearly independent. A basis of eigenspace associated with eigenvalue 0 is the basis is formed by these two vectors. Huh? Eigenvalue 0 had algebraic multiplicity 2, and it turns out that its geometric multiplicity is also 2. That's nice. So this is a basis for the eigenspace. So eigenspace is just span of v1 and v2. So I don't copy the vectors again. So dimension is obviously 2. So geometric multiplicity of the eigenvalue is 2. Okay, so the eigenspace is generated by these two vectors. So we need to keep them. The basis, one of the bases for the eigenspace associated, so this is the eigenspace huh? associated with lambda equals zero. So this eigenspace is generated by two vectors. So that's why it is super important to solve the system, homogeneous system correctly, factor it properly, and then you get your representative eigenvectors. These two vectors are linearly independent because they are not scalar multiple of each other, obviously. So these vectors form a basis for the eigenspace associated with the eigenvalue 0. Good. So let's compute for the other one. So what was the other one? What was the other eigenvalue? Where is it? I equals 3. Okay. Eigenvalue 3. So we need to solve a minus 3i x equal this. So a is here, so we have 1 minus 3, 1, 1, and 1 minus 3, and 1 minus 3. Okay. So 3 is geometric. Its uh, algebraic multiplicity was 1, so we know geometric is also 1. So we will have only one eigenvector in a basis of the eigenspace associated with eigenvalue 3. So this is negative 2, negative 2, negative 2. So we will have one free variable, which means one of these equations is useless. I don't know which one, but one of them. So we could do some work to kill some of these entries. So let's say row 1, replace row 1 plus 2 times row 2, and then row 3, replace it by row 3 minus row 2. So I'm going to work on row 2. As a basis, so here, tuck, tuck, tuck. Okay, so 
minus 2 plus 2 is 0, 1 minus 4 is minus 3, and 1 plus 2 is 3. Okay, and then 1 minus 1 is 0, this minus this is 3, and this is negative 3. So you see the first row and the last row, that scalar multiple of each other, that's good. So they are actually the same thing. Boom, solved. So from the first equation I have that minus 3x2 x plus 3x3 is 0, which means x2 is equal to x3. The last equation says the same thing. So I will use this fact in here because I don't want to suffer for nothing. So I have x1 minus 2 times x2 plus x3. But since x3 is equal to x2, that means that it is x1 minus 2x2 plus x2. So that's minus x2. Great. x2 and x3 are equal, so this is replaced by x2. Then I have just one of them. So this means that x1 is equal to x2. Oh, well, that's good. So x2 is equal to x1 and x3. Ah, cool. So a general solution is so x1. I'll keep x1. Is x2, so okay, x2, x2 is x2, and x3 is x2 also. So factor x2, 1, 1, 1. So this is my eigenvector, representative eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue. The eigenspace is generated by this guy. Right? Dimension of the eigenspace is obviously one. So the eigenspace is just span of the vector one one one. So geometric multiplicity is also 1 for our eigenvalue, that's obvious, you knew it from the beginning. So that's how we do it, it's a lot of solving of the homogeneous equation, but we know how to do that. So in this process it is important to be creative. Here is another example, this one is ugly one. The goal is to show that you can have ugly stuff. So you have a square matrix, 3 by 3, with all the ugly numbers inside, and we need to find eigenvalues, eigenvectors and bases for eigenspace, as usual. So first thing, find the characteristic polynomial. So what's characteristic polynomial of A is the determinant of A minus lambda i. Beautiful, here it is. So any, everything that happens is that we subtract lambda from the diagonal entries, everything else stays, remain, remains the same. Now you can expand by row and column you like, fine. I like to use these elementary row operations to simplify a little bit when possible. So this one doesn't change the determinant. So I'm using it on row 3 to get a, a different matrix, but hopefully with one zero here. I don't see anything else obvious to do, so I'm not doing anything, I need to fight my way through now. One thing, you cannot divide by term containing lambda. 
Lambda is your unknown. Okay, you cannot divide by this thing. Don't do something stupid like saying I'm going to kill this guy by doing rho 2 minus 1 over 8 minus lambda times 3. That's stupid. Don't do that. Don't divide by terms containing lambdas. Illegal. You can only work with these terms that have numbers. Don't divide by this. You can add to it, you subtract from it, fine, but you don't divide by this term or this term or this term. Never divide. Do smart things. You don't need to do this. You can just start fighting from here. It's okay. Your choice. I just wanted to use one zero at least to simplify it because it was obvious. Otherwise, if this number was not three but it was seven, buff, I wouldn't do much. So now I want to expand this by column one and I need to indicate that. And the entire goal of all this process is to show that it can be ugly, complicated, and you can do nothing about it. You just need to fight your way through it. So expand by column one, this guy times the determinant of this small matrix, minus three times the determinant of this small matrix. Okay, so now keep this guy, compute the determinant here. So all the details are listed. The goal again is to show you that sometimes there's nothing you can do. You just need to co keep computing. And I reach here and there's nothing to factor in common. I cannot do much. Okay, I expand. No other choice. I expand here, expand here. Get this thing, then clean it a little bit. And I get this as my characteristic polynomial. It's of degree 3, obviously, because my matrix is 3 by 3. When matrix is 3 by 3, characteristic polynomial will be of degree 3. If matrix is 7 by 7, characteristic polynomial will be of degree 7. So, good news. We will have, most of the time, nice polynomials. And you have integer coefficients. And then you remember that if this poly polynomial has integer roots, those will be factors of the negative 8. So plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 4, plus minus 8. So you try your luck with that to see if any of them makes this 0, if any of those is a root. So that's the goal. There's nothing much you can do about it. And you know that the roots of characteristic polynomial are the eigenvalues. So I'm just going to give you the roots and the eigenvectors associated to the eigenvalues. And you will do the work. So eigenvalues are so lambda 1 is negative 1, lambda 2 is 2, so lambda 3 is 4. So obviously the determinant of matrix A is the product of eigenvalues. So minus 1 times 2 times 4. So negative 8. So the determinant of this matrix here is negative 8. Wow. Again, in our cases, most of the time, matrices are chosen in such a way that they give nice eigenvalues mostly, so it's all sunshine and rainbows. So the eigenvector associated with this eigenvalue, when you compute all the way through, will be 1, 1, 0. And eigenvector associated with this eigenvalue, so those are actually the basis vectors for the eigenspace, right? If you don't like fractions, you can multiply this by 2 and get 1, 2, 3. Ah, oh, that one is cute. You don't have to, you can keep this guy, it's fine. It's up to you, what you like. So in each case, 
Eigenspace here is of dimension one. This is a basis for it. Eigenspace associated with two is of dimension one. This is a basis for it. And eigenspace associated with four, this is a basis for it. And dimension is one, obviously. So that's what you do. Uh, if you want to verify what you would do, you would multiply A times this. What you need to get is minus 1 times V, 1, right? If you do the product, A times, that's the definition, huh? A times V1 is supposed to be negative 1 times V1. A times V2 is supposed to be 2 times V2, huh? That's how you can verify. A times V3 is supposed to be 4 times V3. Or if you use the W, it's fine. W2 is 2 times W. Okay? So that's the definition of eigenvalue eigenvector. So that's a way for you to verify. Again, determinant is the product of all the eigenvalues. So have fun. With this, it's not complicated. What is important to realize is that sometimes you have no choice with the characteristic polynomial. You need to fight your way through. It's tough, and once you get the polynomial, you need to find the roots. No way around it. Let's go with an example 4x4. Four four. Now, obviously, we know that computing those determinants for big matrices is going to be hell, it's going to be long, forever. So I'm choosing here an upper triangular, so at least I can have my eigenvalues for free, because eigenvalues are the diagonal entries. We know that, so we need to be smart from time to time, instead of working for nothing. So I see that 5 is repeated twice, so algebraic multiplicity of eigenvalue 5 is 2. I don't know what is geometric multiplicity, because I don't know what's the dimension of the eigenspace associated with eigenvalue 5. I need to compute and see. But for eigenvalue 3, it's only root once, so it's eigenvalue one time. So it's algebraic and geometric multiplicity is 1 in each case. And for eigenvalue 1, algebraic and geometric multiplicity is 1. I know that. So that's easy, but for this guy, it's geometric multiplicity, so the base, the dimension of the eigenspace associated with eigenvalue 5, the dimension might be 1 or 2, I don't know, I need to compute. So let's compute and see what happens. So we need to solve a minus 5i x equal, so this time is 4 by 1, so identity is 4 by 4, this is 4 by 1, 0 is 4 by 1, so everything is 4 by 4, right? Okay, so 5 minus 5, 0, so I have column of 0, ah, cool, then I have minus 2, so 3 minus 5 is negative 2, Then 5 minus 5, 0. And then I need the last column. So 1 minus 5 is negative 4. And then I have x1, x2, 3, x4 equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, cool. Ah, I'll have one free variable, x1. So I already now know what's going to happen. So I have one free variable, so eigenspace will be of dimension 1. So geometric multiplicity of this eigenvalue 5 will be 1. <laughs> but let's go and compute. So C, last two rows tell me that x4 is equal to 0. So I'm going to jump on that for sure. So this tells me that 4, x4 is 0, so x4 is 0. And I'm going to use it. Obviously, it's not going to be useful here, but it's going to be useful here. I'm going to use it immediately, so I have one thing from the 
row 1, I have this plus 6, x3 equals 0. Because x4 is 0, I, I, I take it immediately. So this thing, it's something I got for free from the equation 3 and 4. So I'm going to use it. And then I have this. Minus 8, x3 equals 0. So this thing here tells me that x2 is equal to 3x3, right? Send the area on the other side, divide by 2, good. And this thing here tells me that x2 is equal to negative 4x3. Well, these two things need to be equal. So x2 is equal to 3x3, and it is equal to 4x3, which means that 3x3 is equal to negative 4x3. How is that possible? Well, it's possible only when x3 is equal to 0. That's what it means. Well, then if x3 is 0, then x2 is 0. Ha, ha, ha. And we know that x1 is free value. So, a general solution. It's an ugly fight. It's a straight fight. You just need to win. That's all. You want to use Gauss Jordan? Go ahead. Or you fight through. It's up to you. So x1 is x1. We knew that from here immediately. x2 is equal to 3 times x3, which is equal to 0. So 0, 0, and x4 is 0, obviously. It's beautiful. So x1 is factor here, and my eigenvector is 1, 0, 0, 0. So eigenspace is generated by this vector, and it's of dimension 1. Isn't that beautiful? So the eigenvector associated with eigenvalue 5 is 1, 0, 0, 0. So let me write this. I'm putting it so we can write properly. Eigenspace associated with the eigenvalue 5 is span of 1, 0, 0, 0. So its dimension is obviously 1. So geometric multiplicity of the eigenvalue is 1 also. Obviously, we know that the determinant of this matrix is 5 times 3, 5 times 5, 1. Right? So just compute it. All right. So we have an eigenvector here associated with the eigenvalue. We have a basis for the eigenspace. Wow, oh, let me try that again. There we go. Okay, so let's compute for eigenvalue 3 now to see what happens. How that goes. So 
eigenvalue 3. So we need to solve a minus 3i x equals 0, and this 0 is 4 by 1. So let's do it. So it's 5 minus 3, that's 2. And then it's 3 minus 3, that's 0. And then we have 5 minus 3, that's 2. And then we have 1 minus 3, that's minus 2. Okay, x1, x2, x3, x4. Okay, so let's see what's funny here. Obviously, the determinant is 0, otherwise we are in trouble. This matrix is not invertible. That's why we computed the eigenvalues. They make a minus lambda i not invertible. The determinant must be zero, so it is. It's good. So the last equation tells me that x4 is zero. I'm going to use that. Okay. Bet on that. This equation, ah, let's put this one. It says that x3 is zero. Cool. Well, I could have it from here. 4 times 0 and then 2x3 equals 0. So, okay, fine. Good. I have those two. Now, I bring it to this guy. So, I have 2 times x1 minus 2 times x2. And then it's plus 6 times 0 minus 1 times 0, right? Because x3 and x4 are 0. So, I'm using that immediately. So, this is 0, 0. So, I have from here x1 equals to x2. <laughs> so let's do, let's say x2 is 3 by the way. Okay. I can say x1 also doesn't matter. One of them. Alright. So let me write here a little bit. So just like this equal to 1, so I don't forget. So let's see what this gives. So we have x1, x2, x3, x4, ta -da. So x1 is equal to x2. x2 is x2, x3 is 0, x4 is 0. So factor x2, 1, 1, 0, 0. So v2 is equal to 1, 1, 0, 0. So this is a vector that generates the entire eigenspace. So eigenspace associated with the eigenvalue 3 is the span of 1, 1, 0, 0. Obviously, this guy and the previous guy are linearly independent. We know that. So basis is a set that contains this vector here. So this is a representative eigenvector associated with lambda two equal three. Boom. So the dimension of this eigenspace is one, we knew that from the day one. All right, so that's it. Need to compute now eigenvector associated with eigenvalue one. Let's go. Boom. So solve this. Only the entries on the diagonal change. Obviously, this is not good anymore. Like that one is 1. Okay, so this one is 4. 5 minus 1 is 4. 3 minus 1 is 2. 5 minus 1 is 4. And 1 minus 1 is 0. And it's good, the last equation. 
is useless, but that means that the other three are useful, which is a bad news for us. But this equation tells me this, which means that x3 is equal to negative x4. And I'm going to use that. This equation tells me 2x2 minus 8, x3 is 0, which means that x2 is 4x3. Ah, looks like I'm going to use x3 as a free variable. This will be useful. And the last one on the top, minus 2x2 plus 6x3 minus x4 is 0, but that's because, now I replace stuff in it, so this guy, so I have minus 8 x3 plus 6 x3, so negative x4 is x3, so I'm going to use x3 as my free variable apparently, or x1, so this thing is negative x3, right? Supposed to minus 8, so minus 2, minus 1. Okay, so x1 is 1 over 4 x3. It's a little bit ugly, but what can we do? Okay, so solution. Let's write the solution here. So let's clean it a little bit. Okay. Slowly recycle stuff. Okay, so now x1 is 1 over 4 x3. I'll have x3 here, obviously. I have 1 over 4. And then where are my other thing? x2 is 4 times x3. 4 times x3. This is 4 here. And then x3 is obviously x3. One here. And x4 is negative x3. This is negative 1. So supposedly this is good. Well, I could check. Multiply this times this. It's supposed to give me this again. So, so. Okay, if you don't like fractions, you can multiply by 4, but okay, let's let's live with a fraction. So 1 over 4. 4, 1, minus 4 is, a, is an eigenvector, is a representative eigenvector associated with eigenvalue 1, right? So this guy, 1 over 4, 4, 1, minus 1. Basis of this thing is 1 over 4, 4, 1, minus 1. Okay, so that's what we do. So solving this homogeneous system, well, you can do your Gauss Jordan, it's fine, but I find it more interesting when you fight with it. It's a straight fight, so you just need to win. No rules, just fight through it. Be careful though, because sometimes you can make an error. Uh, if you want to verify in general, if you are right or not, Remember that A times V1 needs to be lambda 1 V1. A times V2 needs to be lambda 2 V2. A times V3 needs to be lambda 3 V3, right? A times V4, whatever we have. So you can double check that way if you wish. If you don't want, why well, it's fine too. It's up to you. So solve as many problems as you can. It's fun. So now it's up to you to practice. I give you here some exercises. You have them in the book also. So start with smaller matrices, compute the characteristic polynomial, find the roots, which are the eigenvalues, and then for each eigenvalue, find the basis for the eigenspace. So find the eigenvectors, representative eigenvectors. So that's the idea. Here are some examples that are solved. Well, you get at least the answer. You need to do the process. 
what I want to show here is you have matrix A and it's transpose. And we said we know already that the eigenvalues will be the same because the characteristic polynomial is the same for A and A transpose. So the eigenvalues will be the same, one and two. But the eigenspaces are different. Here you see the eigenspaces span of negative three, one, and here is span of zero, one. And here is span of one, zero, and here is span of one, three. So it's not exactly the same, huh? So be careful. When you have matrix and it transpose, the eigenvalues are the same. The geometric and algebraic multiplicity of the eigenvalues is the same, but the eigenspaces are different. So these are just examples. So here is another one. So I just repeat, I have a matrix and it's transpose, so the eigenvalues I know are they are the same, so I just need to recompute the eigenvectors associated, and you see they're different. So just go through the process, have some fun. So here are some other matrices, so these are three by three. This one has three different eigenvalues, so each eigenvalue will be of algebraic and geometric multiplicity one, so it will have eigenspace generated by one eigenvector, so dimension of the eigenspace will be one. So those are just things for you to practice, go through the process. This one was triangular lower, so the eigenvalues are four, negative two, and three, so you don't need to suffer, you just say B is lower triangular matrix, therefore eigenvalues are the diagonal entries. Boom, so eigenvalues come for free here. You need to compute for the eigenvectors though. And remember, any scalar multiple of an eigenvector, other than zero, is also an eigenvector. So if you have fractions, maybe you don't like fractions, multiply by the denominator and that's it. So here are other examples. Characteristic polynomial is given here, so the roots are one, two, and negative one. And here B is the transpose of A, so it has the same eigenvalues, so you just need to compute the eigenvectors. This one, we solved it already. It's very fun. So in this case, zero was an eigenvalue of multiplicity two. So algebraic multiplicity was two because zero was eigenvalue twice. And after computing for the eigenvectors, we figured out that we have two linearly independent eigenvectors that generate the entire eigenspace. So dimension of the eigenspace was two because these two vectors generate. So geometric multiplicity for this eigenvalue was also two. So that's fine. Maybe it was one, maybe two, we didn't know, we had to solve. So we solved and we found that we had two free variables, so the process guarantees that these two vectors are linearly independent, right? You can check it also. And obviously this one is independent on the other two, obviously. Another example here, two is an eigenvalue of multiplicity two, so it's algebraic multiplicity is two, and after solving for eigenvectors, it happens that this geometric multiplicity was also two because the eigenspace was generated by these two vectors. And we know when we use the transpose, the eigenvalues are the same, their geometric and algebraic multiplicities are the same. The spaces are different though, because this linear space and this linear space are different. This one and this one are different, obviously. Okay, so here zero was an eigenvalue two and one. So the determinant of this matrix is zero because the determinant is product of eigenvalues. So zero times one times two, so it's zero. That means this matrix A is not invertible. Here's another one. So you can go and play. You have a lot of problems in the book to solve. Some of them test the definition of eigenvalue and eigenvector. Others are just compute the eigenvalues and then for each eigenvalue compute the eigenvectors. So enjoy the practice. It's gonna be fun. It's not complicated. It's pretty straightforward. Just need to compute and be patient.